Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. This week Ava is in London visiting her sister, so I've got the boat all to myself. If you're new to our channel, my name is Mess and this is my fiance Ava. I've spent the last five years doing a somewhat extensive refit on my 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That involved all kinds of fun stuff like building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, gutting most of the interior to make structural repairs and then subsequently rebuilding most of the interior. I also rebuilt the entire deck and painted the top sides. All of that fun is documented in hundreds of videos here on YouTube. Ava's been gone for less than a day and this is what the boat looks like now. Now I do care about the interior design of the boat, it's just my interior design is a little bit more tool centric whereas Ava is more leaning towards fluffy pillows and stuff like that. This week I hope to beautify the companionway here, it's one of the last untouched areas on the boat so that'll be really nice to get that spiffied up. Over here by the mad station I hope to get some formica put down on the table here. I also want to varnish most of the trim we've got here in the head and paint here in the aft cabin and there's some other smaller projects. One of the big eyesores here at the companionway is this teak profile for the washboards to slide into. Unfortunately we can't fix that this week. In the end of January we're going to go to a workshop and make a new one of these and some companionway doors and it's going to be really awesome but yeah we can't do anything about the teak profile this week but we can do a bit of varnishing, some painting and make this look a heck of a lot better. Even with the sped up process for varnishing that I'm going to show you in this video, we are a little bit pressed for time because it's going to take about two and a half days to finish the varnishing and then we need about two days after that to paint also. So yeah, we better hurry up and get started. First step is of course going to be to remove the headliner. It wouldn't be a boat project without having to remove something to do something that really should be simple. In line with the look of the rest of the boat here at the companionway we're gonna have painted wood that meets varnished wood and I am a firm believer in varnishing before you paint because that's gonna give you the nicest cut lines. So the last thing I'm gonna do this week is paint. Before that I want to varnish but before I can varnish there's some missing trim up here. There's another piece of trim missing over here and the piece of trim I've got is not long enough so we're gonna have to do a little bit of fairing to cover up this so we can paint it but have it look nice and flat. There's a repair I made here that's butting up against some of the trim that needs to be varnished and we actually need to finish that repair with a little bit of fairing compound before we can varnish. The other side of that repair also needs some attention before it's ready for varnish and paint. And of course before we can do anything we also need to remove all this old partially failed varnish from both the areas that are going to get painted and the areas that are going to get varnished. I set to work with my scraper to remove the worst of the old varnish. I then removed the last little bit with my trusty Bosch 150 Turbo. I've been working for a few hours at this point so I thought it was high time for a scope change. I wasn't planning on replacing the old Threadmaster but some of it was in pretty bad condition. Fortunately it was easy to remove with a heat gun and a screwdriver. The bulk of the sanding is done. I still have a bit to do but it is getting pretty late and we do have neighbors here so I better save that until tomorrow. But I've made these two pieces of trim for the corners up here. This guy goes over here. The other piece goes over here. Let's go ahead and get those adhered in place with some thickened epoxy. Wow, I can't believe it's been a few months since I last mixed up thickened epoxy. I used to do that almost every day. A dab of epoxy and 406 will do the trick. And smush. Next morning I sprang into action, mixed up some delicious polyester putty and set to work filling a bunch of old screw holes and other imperfections. Then it was on to removing the old Treadmaster on the companionway steps. My technique improved as I went along and the last step came off as one big piece. High on my Treadmaster win I dived into everybody's favorite, some oh glorious sanding. I think we're finally ready for the first coat of varnish in this area. There's still some more work to be done down here but I can do that in between coats. This is the stuff I'll be using. I've used this on most of the interior trim and it is awesome to work with. It is called Clear Wood Sealer Fast Dry and the secret to why this is awesome is kind of in the name. Fast dry. 15 minutes after this stuff has been applied it's going to be touch dry meaning I can go ahead and generate dust in here without it getting stuck in the coat and about two to three hours after applying a coat I can go ahead and apply the next coat. So in a day I can get maybe three or four coats applied. The clear wood sealer is very glossy which is not my personal preference so the last coat is going to be this stuff. Gold spar satin which is going to give us a nice satin finish. God 
dang it, I bought this stuff at the local channelry and I was wondering how long they've had it sitting there on the shelf and the answer to that is too long. I don't think you guys can see inside of the can, but it's fully crystallized in there. So yeah, this is a non-starter. That was part B and part A doesn't really seem to be in a liquid state anymore either. So yeah, this is no good. This was the last clear wood sealer on the shelf at the Chandlery, so I can't get my hands on another one. I do have a more traditional polyurethane varnish here, which I could apply. It's gonna make my life a little bit more difficult. The touch dry interval for this is around 45 minutes to an hour versus 15 minutes on the clear wood sealer. That's bad news because there was plenty of other stuff I wanted to work on in between coats and this longer interval is gonna eat into that. But what's even worse is that the overcoating interval for this is six hours versus two to three hours for the clear wood sealer. So yeah. I dropped off the wood sealer at the chandler and got a refund and picked up a thinner number one because that's what we need for this polyurethane varnish. This is not the end of the world, but it is gonna limit me in how productive I can be this week. So that's a little bit of a shame. That's the first coat applied. Now it's time for me to step away for an hour and twiddle my thumbs. I'll see if I can come up with a plan that'll allow me to finish painting this week. Okay, there is good news and there is bad news. I've got a plan that should hopefully allow me to finish painting this week. The bad news is that that involves a bit of late night varnishing. It is two o'clock in the morning and it is time for the third coat of varnish. When I get up in the uh, morning, um, I should be able to give this a light sanding and then apply the fourth coat. It's the next morning. I had to turn down the temperature to be able to sleep. And of course that slowed down the curing process a little bit, but I think we're finally good to start generating dust again. As you guys saw yesterday, I got busy ferrying and filling little holes and imperfections in preparation of painting. Turns out I overlooked some screw holes in the aft cabin and also some of these areas need just a dab more filler. Here are those screw holes. And also I wanna add a little bit of filler to this top edge here where the edge of the plywood is exposed. That'll get rid of the texture and make it look a lot better once it's painted. Our new flooring is gonna show up on Monday. And when we installed it, I wanna add little lights down here by the toe kick. So I wanna make sure that the toe kick doesn't look too horrible. We'll let the putty do its thing and I can come back and sand it later. For now, the most important thing is that I get the next coat of varnish on there. We are on a tight schedule here. I haven't sanded in between the first few coats, but I'm gonna start doing that now. And for doing that, I'm a huge fan of these foam-backed sanding doodads. They do a really good job and they're a little bit easier on the fingers than regular sandpaper. So uh, let's give this a go. The trim is actually starting to look fairly decent already. So maybe two more coats and we should be done. In between coats of varnish, I would love to get some Formica put on the table here at the mad station. And I just so happen to have a little bit of Formica right here. I was able to find this small piece on Amazon because we definitely do not need a full sheet. I think the seller just included this wood stuff here to protect the laminate that I actually ordered, this very light gray color. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in this area, so I'm excited to have Formica on that little table because it's a very hard wearing and maintenance free surface. But to be able to get this to lay flat, there is a little bit of paint I need to clean up along the edges. I want a nice flat surface so I don't get any voids in between the plywood and the laminate. With the surface prep and sanded, it's time to move on to cutting this to the right shape, which is no doubt gonna be the trickiest part of this project because this stuff really likes to splinter or crack. The aft edge here and the side of the table is no problem. I can let the laminate overhang that and trim it once it's glued in place. That'll be easy. The slightly more tricky part is this inside corner. And I only have one go at this, so uh, fingers crossed. We're getting a lot closer here. I think I am happy with this fit, so let's go ahead and get some contact adhesive applied. Now, unfortunately, I am out of notched trowels, so... Let's see if we can apply this stuff with a foam roller. I've gone along the edges with a brush just to make absolutely sure that there's enough adhesive on there. And I've also applied adhesive to the back of the laminate. I ran out of adhesive. I would have liked to have gotten a little bit more on there, but I'm out, so 
fingers crossed. The adhesive is now tacked up. It's no longer coming off when I touch it. So let's uh, go ahead and give this a go. That is looking pretty good. There's still the small matter of the little areas here where my flush trimming bit couldn't get to, but I should be able to sand those out with just a little bit of sandpaper. Okay, that's it. Now I'll just break the edge to not have it be super sharp. And the nav station is fully assembled again. I think that looks pretty dang spiffy. Next week we're going to put the side on there and then it's really going to look good. The next morning it was time for the final round of polyester putty fun fun to make sure all of the imperfections were filled and that the toe kick was ready for paint next week. There was still some old contact adhesive and varnish left on the steps and it took just about forever to remove it but after that there was just a small matter of masking everything off. And now we are finally, finally, finally ready for primer and then paint. This has been a lot of work for a relatively small area of the boat. For primer, I'll be using Interprotect and for paint, I'll be using Undercoat. This is the same combo I've used for most of the interior of the boat. Undercoat can be a little bit tricky to apply. There's definitely a little bit of a learning curve. You don't want to apply too much of the stuff because then you will get runs or curtains, call them whatever you will. But let's worry about that later. For now, we just need to get the primer on there. Now the common denominator between these two products is that they really something fierce and I'm pretty sure they've got some somewhat nasty safety labels on there. So in preparation of applying this stuff I ordered a new mask and filter. This only just showed up today. I would like to have had it when I was sanding but I also forgot to order the pre-filter for this filter so yeah it wouldn't have been great for dust but for painting the A2 is, I believe, what you want. This is the half mask. I also have the full face version of this kicking around in a locker. And that's awesome for when you really need to grind a lot of fiberglass or something like that. But what's not so awesome about it is, uh, well, the glasses. They don't go super well with a full face mask. But I've had a couple of these half masks over the years and they've been absolutely awesome. They're reusable so all you have to do is to change the filters every once in a while. Now in terms of size I definitely need the 6300, the large one. The mask is super light on its own. The filters do weigh a little bit but the mask is super light and very comfortable. My previous masks of this model have all failed in the same way and it's the elastic band. It seems to last maybe a year, year and a half but then it's just all stretched out and useless. Having said that it's probably Probably not a bad idea to just swab out the mask every once in a while to not have it be too gross. The filters are super easy and very quick to replace. They just kind of rotate onto here like that. I am sure there's somebody in the comment section that's going to point out that according to OSHA or whomever, you can't get a 100% seal with one of these masks when you have a beard. And that may technically be true, but I can tell you from personal experience that this thing does make a heck of a difference. As a little bit of an experiment, I've removed the filters. Now I'm going to cover those filter mounting holes with my hands and suck. So I can feel a tiny bit of air coming in through the beard, but that's with 100% resistance. I don't think the filters are going to be that resistive. And no matter what, having a beard or not having a beard, wearing the thing has to be better than not wearing the thing. Anywho, enough safety yammering. Let's get some primer applied. Time certainly flies when you're having fun. It's about eight hours later now. I've gone over the surfaces just to knock down the grain of the wood with some 240 grit. And we now have nice smooth surfaces. And that means it's time for undercoat. This is a little bit of paint that's left over from when I painted the hull. It's the same paint I've used here in the galley behind me. Now this step applying the undercoat is where I can really mess up because if I apply this too thick, it will run or sag. 
and then I'm gonna have to wait until it's sandable which at this temperature I think is gonna be something like 23 hours. So yeah, if I mess this step up, then I waste a day. On the other hand, if I apply too little paint, then I'll end up with dry spots and we don't want that either. So yeah, it's a tricky process. Something that's really gonna help are these rollers. These are my favorite rollers. They seem to be semi-resistant to the harsh chemicals in the primer and the paint, and they also have concave or hollowed out ends here. And while that is maybe something that seems like it's not a big deal, it actually helps a lot. This is a regular roller with a flat end, and here is the concave end one, where the magic of the concave really shines is when you're painting and you start a new section, you don't seem to get the same little runs or little blobs of paint on the side of the roller that you can do with traditional rollers. So yeah, these are really awesome. And this is the exact brand I was using when I was painting the top sides and that seemed to turn out fairly well. So before we leave the UK, I'm gonna be stocking up on these. There is not much point in me showing you guys a time lapse of the paint application because it's white paint on a white surface. So you wouldn't be able to see it anyways, but uh, let's jump ahead until tomorrow morning. Slight change of plans. It is not the morning after, it's a couple of days later, and I'm actually finished painting and I've removed the masking tape. It turned out fairly well. There are some small issues. Like for instance, over here, I was a little bit late in removing the masking tape. So I got a little bit of a jagged edge there, which doesn't look great. I hope I can fix that next week. What would really improve the look over here is some new Threadmaster on the steps. The old stuff I removed was a little dated and worn. I picked up some of this dark gray Threadmaster, which I think is gonna look really awesome. This is the before shot, and here are all the pieces trimmed, but not yet glued in place. There are two different ways of gluing down Threadmaster, this regular contact adhesive, and then there is an epoxy from Threadmaster. I'll go with the epoxy for this one because I'm a little bit afraid if I use the contact adhesive, I won't be able to get the pieces lined up right because with contact adhesive, you only really get one chance, whereas with the epoxy, I should have a little bit more working time. This morning I tried my very best to find a notched trowel here in Gosport. No luck, so I've kind of made my own. I think this may be a little bit too aggressive, but let's see how it goes. I'm only gonna mix up about half of the... Uh... Okay, that's a funny type of liquid. I don't need a lot of adhesive, so I'm only gonna mix up about half of this stuff. Here goes nothing. I'm interested to see if I'll have to put some weight on the edges to get them to lay flat. Of course, that would have been one upside to using the contact adhesive that would kind of just stick in place instantly. This stuff is a freaking joy to work with. I am very happy I did not go with the contact adhesive. The corners on the top one here does seem to want to lift a little bit. So uh, yeah, let's just find something heavy to weigh them down with. I'll keep a close eye on the Treadmaster for the next few hours. According to the instructions, between one to four hours after having applied the stuff, it's gonna start setting. So yeah, if we just keep an eye on it and make sure there are no loose flabby bits, it'll all work out perfectly fine. So this week I put Formica on the table at the nav station. I got all of the trim varnished here at the companionway, also in the aft cabin. I got all this stuff painted, also in the aft cabin. I got Treadmaster on the steps. I think it's starting to look pretty dang spiffy. Of course, it's not gonna look super awesome until we have the new companionway doors and the new washboards that we're gonna make in January. But for now, I think it's a good improvement. So let's go ahead and close a bunch of painting and varnishing tasks over here. That is four tasks we can move into, done. Ava's gonna be back aboard on Monday, which is tomorrow, which is why I've gone ahead and tidied up all of my tools and removed <clears throat> most of the dust. An attempt at happy wife, happy life. Also Monday, our new flooring should be showing up, which I'm very excited about. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to install it next week because before we install the flooring, we need to build the device charging area on the side of the kitchen island. And also there's some reinforcement that needs to happen underneath the cabin sole. So yeah, we might not get to the flooring next week, but we're definitely gonna be building the little charging area for our devices next week here on the side of the kitchen island, which is gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be the end of this week's video. As always, feel free to leave a comment comment down below and don't forget if you've enjoyed this video please remember to leave a like see you